Hey friends, this is CJ with Prodigy Creations, here today with four pro tips for recording audio at home. And the good news is that I'm not here to sell you on a certain microphone or any other type of product. I'm just here to give you some practical advice on how to use what is already available to you to its fullest potential. However, if you don't have any gear yet and you don't really know where to start, stay tuned because I will go over the essentials of what you'll need. And this is exactly what I do in all of my recorded music. I record at home, and I've been happy with my results so far. And if you would like to check out what I've been able to pull off on my recordings, I will definitely make sure to link it down in the video description. But to be fair, I realize I'm not the most famous person out there, so you might not care about what I've been able to pull off. Um, and if that's you, I totally get it. So let me throw out a couple names out there. Al City. The White Stripes. The Black Keys. Bruce Springsteen, okay? I'm sure you recognize most of, if not all of those names. And the amazing thing is that each of these artists at some point in their career have recorded their music in a home setting and obviously had great success nonetheless. And in 2019, or wherever you're watching this from, we're at an even better place than those artists were in the past. With the rise of technology, I would argue that recording at home has become just as valuable as recording in a quote-unquote professional studio. It is possible. You can do this. You got this. So hopefully that gets you fired up and inspired. But without further ado, let's just dive right into this. So if you are new to recording, these are some basic things that you're going to need. Obviously, the first thing you're going to need is a microphone to record those beautiful vocals of yours. And there are two different types of microphones that you could consider. The first one being the standard microphone that connects via XLR, much like the one on the left of the Samson C01. But there's also mics out there that you can do a simple plug and play recording through a USB mic. Now, should you use an XLR mic or a USB mic? It really comes down to your needs and your preferences. Um, but I'm gonna put that on the back burner for now. If you want more in-depth explanation on what would be best for you, stay tuned till the end. But if you do decide that an XLR mic is the way for you, the next thing you're gonna need is an audio interface, which allows you to connect to your computer to record. And it also comes with these handy dandy gain knobs that allows you to adjust the input sensitivity of your mic, okay? The next thing you're gonna need is a DAW, otherwise known as a digital audio workstation. And this is the software that's going to allow us to both record and mix. Now there's a ton of different DAWs out there. I don't have time to get into the details of every single one of them. Some pretty well-known ones though, Pro Tools, Studio One, Logic, Ableton, and many more, but those are some pretty well-known ones. And there are some of these DAWs that offer a free version of their, of their software so that you can kind of get an idea of what it's all about and if it's for you. But if there's a DAW that doesn't necessarily have a free version, most of them do have a free 30 day trial. So you can kind of get the same concept of testing out the DAW and seeing if it's right for you. So, you know, I was I would just suggest to shop around and, and then just see which one feels right to you. Final thing you're gonna need is a pair of headphones. And this is gonna be used for listening to yourself while you're recording, uh, listening to yourself during playback when you've, when you've finished recording and you wanna listen back to it. And you can even use headphones to mix. So headphones are definitely an essential purchase for you. So just a reminder, you need products like the ones shown here, but they don't need to be these exact products. Shop around and see what's best for your needs. And if you would like specific recommendations based on your budget, again, stay tuned till the end and I'll have some more info for you. So first things first, before we even think about starting to record, we first need to think about the area in which we'll be recording. So in other words, ask yourself this question, which room in my house is the best place to record? Okay, I'll just give you the best answer right off the bat and that's gonna be your closet. Okay, so here's some pictures of when I recorded in my closet, and this was when I recorded a song using a $50 microphone, which I also made a video about. If you haven't checked it out, definitely make sure to do so. 
But why is the closet the most ideal spot in your house to record? Well, obviously you have a lot of clothes already hanging up on your walls. And this is really helping to absorb a lot of sound. So why is, why is that helpful? Well, comparatively, if you were to record audio in a room that doesn't have a lot of furniture and there's a bunch of bare walls, okay? If you record in a room like that, the sound is gonna bounce off of the walls and reflect back into the microphone. And it's just gonna result in this really amateur sounding recording, okay? So the more things you have to absorb sound, the better. So naturally this makes your closet a good spot for it. And as you can see here on this wall here, it was before it was just a bunch of bare wall, um, but I decided to hang up some towels here. This is actually two towels stacked on top of each other, hung them up on this bare wall because I knew that that would be a likely source of reflections going back into the microphone. So just hung up some towels to help improve the sound. And I know it may not look professional. It may look very unprofessional and amateur. However, keep this in mind. The great thing about audio is that no one in the grander scheme of things, no one really cares about what your recording process looks like. But everyone cares about what your recording sounds like. Okay, so keep this in mind. But I do realize that not everyone has a walk-in closet. So your next best option is going to be recording in a room in your house that has the most furniture and then place the mic in the center of that room farthest away from all of the walls and record that way. And again, just like I did, don't be afraid to hang up some towels you might have laying around or some blankets, whatever you have available to you to cover up those bare walls to help you get a better recording. So step two, you're gonna need proper gain staging. And that may sound like pig Latin or something to you. So let me just give you a easy translation, making sure that you're recording at the proper levels. That's it. So before actually recording, you'll wanna do a mic check. Perform at the same amount of effort that you will be when you're actually recording. Okay, and then keep your eye on the meter in your DAW and then simply adjust it to the right level. And you would do this by adjusting those gain knobs that you saw earlier on the audio interface or simply by positioning a different mic placement if you have a USB mic that doesn't offer a gain knob on it. But what is that right level? So with this, there is one commandment and one suggestion. The commandment being, do not under any circumstances record above zero dB. This is the limit in digital audio because anything above zero dB will cause nasty, unwanted distortion. And obviously there is such a thing as pleasant distortion, but that is another topic for another day. So just keep in mind that for the purpose of digital recording, we don't ever wanna go past zero dB. Suggestion, keep your recordings between minus 18 and minus six dB. Now I will say you do at least want your audio signal to be in the ballpark of minus 18 at its lowest. However, the minus six is more of a suggestion than a rule. So if your audio peaks above minus six, say to minus three, minus two, it's not the end of the world. It's totally fine. That's where it becomes more of a suggestion. As long as you obey the zero dB commandment, you should be in good shape. Step three, utilize the back of the microphone. So maybe you're thinking, but wait a minute, my microphone doesn't record from the back. Exactly. Use this to your advantage. If there's a source of noise in your recording space, like a vent blowing AC, or maybe a window with people making a lot of noise outside, just point the back of your mic toward that source of noise so that the front of the mic will reject it, okay? So most mics is going to operate on a cardioid polar pattern as represented here. And this is the point where the mic is picking up the most sensitivity, the most sound. And then as you notice, anything beyond that point doesn't start to pick up as much audio as that point does until finally we get to the back of it where it's like, nope, I don't want any of that. So use that to your advantage. Pretty simple concept, but powerful nonetheless. 
Step four is going to be using a pop filter. Um, and there are different types of pop filters. In fact, let me go back to this previous slide because as you see with this type of microphone, which would be considered a large diaphragm microphone, these kind of pop filters are best suited towards those. However, if we go back here and look at that other option, you may recognize something like that because that is that is fitted for dynamic microphones, much like the microphones you would see live performers using. Um, so there's really not a right or wrong mic to record with. So whatever mic you decide to use, get the pop filter that it's best suited for. And a pop filter is used to eliminate what are called plosives. For instance, saying the word pop or, I don't know, Penelope pushes a lot of air out of your mouth. And the mic oftentimes picks up an airy, boomy sound with plosive words. Using a pop filter will eliminate plosives and result in an even more professional sounding audio recording. Some great news with this, they are super duper cheap. They're, you can get them anywhere from $6 to $12. So, you know, my recommendation is you might as well get one because it's not going to cost you a lot anyway, and it's going to give you better audio as a result. I will provide a link to the specific pop filter I use down below. Uh, I do think it was closer to the $12 range, so by no means do you have to buy that one if there are $6 ones. However, it's just the one I use, so I know I can recommend it. So, honorable mention, we've covered all the steps for getting a good recording process, but there is one more step I would like to mention that can really help you get even better audio, and that's going to be EQ. Okay, EQ is a tool that you can use after recording to shape the tone of your audio to how you want it to sound. So think of it like adjusting the bass and the treble functions in your car stereo, but on steroids, okay? These EQs are a lot more adjustable, a lot more surgical, more detail, more depth in them, uh, and every DAW has a stock EQ. So obviously I don't have enough time to go into the details of how you can use EQ and what it does. However, let me know down in the comments if you'd like to see some of those videos on how you can best utilize EQ because I I think it would be a lot of fun and if you think it could be helpful to you, let me know. I would love to do it. One last thing before you go. If you found this guide helpful and you're ready to get started recording your music but you want a more in-depth explanation on things, much like the USB or XLR mic that we discussed earlier, or you're interested in receiving gear recommendations based on your budget, also, as hinted at earlier in this video, I have great news for you. I have a free guide for you available on my website, prodigycreationsnow.com, and it is a free ebook called The Simple Guide to Recording Music Now in Five Steps or Less, okay? And in this free ebook that I give to you, we talk about a lot of similar things that we discussed in this video, but more in depth into the things you will need, why you need them, and how to use them. And as of right now, there is a bonus material in this ebook giving you gear recommendations based on your budget to build a home studio, anywhere from $50 to $1,500. So to claim your free gift, all you have to do is visit prodigycreationsnow.com, sign up for the free ebook. All you have to do is enter in your email address, and within minutes, you will receive your free copy of the Simple Guide to Recording Music Now in five steps or less. With that guys, this is CJ from Prodigy Creations thanking you for watching my video and wishing the best of luck to you and happy creating.